everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on Flosstube, and I'm coming to you on this Thursday, December 19th, 2019, with my next update. And probably my last, like, regular update for 2019. Um, and it's a quick one. <laughs> That's just kind of how it works. Uh, I put out a two hour long video, and it covers six weeks worth of stuff. Um, then the video after is almost always crazy short, especially in comparison, and today is no different. I have just a few projects to show you, and then in our extra topics, all of that is brief conversation. Plans, stash, book, knit, yeah, it's, it's quick like. Um, but that's just the way it goes. Um, I guess it's kind of refreshing, <laughs> uh, for me at least. Um, I don't have as much of a task ahead of me um, as I did last week. Anyway, uh, just uh, real quick here, thank you for everybody who watched all of that. Um, it was a lot. You know, I film my videos in segments and so I'm never really sure how long they are. <laughs> and so I was a little bit surprised to see that near two hour mark. Um, like, I mean, I knew that I started filming at 1 and I finished around 3.30, uh, but I, I don't know, it just, it just caught me off guard <laughs> how long that was. Uh, so anyway, enough about that. Um, I guess with a quick video, let's just go ahead and, and get into it. And we're going to start, as usual, with works in progress. As I said, works in progress, I have just three things to show you, uh, two of which are mini finishes and one I haven't even posted about on Instagram, so you guys are kind of getting the advanced screening, <laughs> so to speak, of uh, what I'm working on. So, uh, when last we spoke, I was working on In This Moment. This is by Heaven and Earth Designs. The artwork is by Jeremiah Kettner, and goal reached and extra goal reached and feeling super good. About, um, about what I've done within this moment. So uh, I was a little over halfway through page 29 when I filmed last week and I have now finished page 29. So uh, here we're gonna go through this again where we see if I can get it all in frame. Um, I guess I'm sitting a little bit closer to the camera this time because she really barely fits. How cool does this look with that diagonal complete? Like, <laughs> that's, I don't know, that feels like a, like a milestone to have that diagonal complete. So I was working on, like I said, page 29. My hopes of getting it done on Saturday, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, uh, but I didn't get it done until um, midday on Monday. So a full couple days later. So yeah, that is, uh, that is page 29. And these threads here are parked in the bottom row of pages. So I've got another 50, I think, like 53, two or three stitches further down to go to reach the very bottom. Maybe a little more than that. Um, of the whole design which is just, that's, that's pretty wild. Uh, this was the confetti. That was, that was some confetti. Um, really, all of those kind of rings in the waves, that's where the confetti lies in, in these pages. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super pleased to have the page done. And it's pretty. Um, it's not my favorite, certainly. But... It's pretty, and I like it. And so now I've got the diagonal done, and I did nine pages this year. I just had a look at my uh, Heaven and Earth Designs tracking uh, spreadsheet, and I have completed 14 pages on In This Moment straight. Like, that's wild. 14 pages straight. Um, I just, I, I don't know, that that surprised me. So essentially, I walked into 2018 with one page done 
And after I went cuckoo bananas on uh, Snow Castle in the beginning of 2018, I had been working on In This Moment since. And 14 pages straight. That's, that's just wild. So uh, I feel really good about having reached that goal about reaching this milestone. I am over 40% complete. I'm over 112,000 stitches total. Um, still a hundred and like 65 or something like that to go. Um, so still a ways to go, but feeling good. Uh, I don't know that I talked about this last time. This is 25 count Lugana. Uh, it is cream. It's from Zweigart. I stitched all of my heaven and earth designs one over one full cross. And so she's going to go away for the rest of 2019, which is like what, two weeks? Um, <laughs> so not a whole lot, but anyway, she's really pretty. I'm super, super stoked. So there's my in this moment. So I got that page finished and then it was time to continue on with finish that stitch December. And so I spun the wheel and the next one that came up was Sheep Heap by Plum Street Samplers. So that is living in one of my Mommelie bags, gorgeousness, with the polka dot print. Oh look, at we are just all polka dots today. <laughs> And so here is what Sheep Heap is meant to look like finished. And here is mine finished. Oh, there's the back. So there is my Sheep Heap. This is a 32 count Belfast in Colonial Parchment from Fabrics by Stephanie. And uh, it took two days. Um, the majority of yesterday. I thought for sure I'd be done yesterday around noon and then I would film afterwards. And I think I put in the final stitch like 7.30. <laughs> it took it took the majority of the day. I mean, you know, in amongst other things, but still. So the colors are in part conversion slash substitution in part as called for. Um, it, it's charted to be done on 36 count, I believe, Oaken from Picture This Plus with one strand over two. Because I did 32 count, I did two over two. Um, so my back stitch is um, it's in one strand, except for down here. These little florally bits, I wanted those to be seen atop the gray mountain, or the green mountain, excuse me. Uh, and so I did that in two strands. Uh, so yeah. That is my finished sheep heap. I'm super excited. Um, and my plan is to do a total of four of the animal stacks. I kind of had a thought about this as I was working on it. So this is kind of spring-like. And goat load is very summer-like. And gobble gob is very autumnal. Should I do rack stack instead of the llamas for winter? Should I make this seasonal? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it would be fun. They're all together, so it, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I feel about it. Um, I I love Rack Stack. I love the whole series, and it might be fun to do the entire series, but um, I really only have it in the plans to do four currently. Anyway, so there is that. Um, I do love it. I did... Um, Color and Cotton and a couple of Gentle Arts and Classic Color Works and DMC. Yeah, a whole mess of things. Um, so there's that. And so that was my finish that stitch December finish number five because my pages on in this moment also counted. So five down, like seven to go, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But that's all right. After finishing Sheep Heap, I needed to pull up my next project for Finish That Stitch December. And to be totally honest, I was, I'm kind of feeling like deviating from that a little bit. Um, but 
I'm not quite there yet where I'm actually going to, to do that. Uh, so I had Danny spin the wheel for me. <laughs> this is basically what it boils down to. I didn't trust myself to go with what it said. So he spun the wheel for me and up came flowers of the month. Um, I have that listed on the wheel twice because the goal is to get two of those blocks done here in December. Um, but I didn't want to like commit to doing both in one, in one shot. Anyway, um, so <laughs> here's something kind of funny. Both of the flowers of the month blocks, as well as the C is for cow block on my prairie school or alphabet, I included those here and finished that stitch December because they were supposed to be uh, my last three projects for a year of whips. And so I was like, cool, I'm going to take December and I'm going to get these goals accomplished. I'm going to get year of whips done for the first time ever. Year of whips ended yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and I completely forgot that. Um, I was thinking I had until December 31st and I was going to be good to go. And then, well, it ended yesterday. So these are going to be finished for finish. That's it's December and for my own benefit, I guess. Um, but yeah, Year of Whips is done. I got 15 out of 18 done, which is pretty great. Uh, that is the best I think I have ever done on, on Year of Whips. So I will take it as a win. Anyway, uh, you'll be seeing a preview here of what the entire Flowers of the Month series will look like finished. You will also see a close-up of Ms. Lily of the Valley, which is the one that I had up next, and it's the one that I kitted up and started this morning. I'm stitching this series on 32 Count Belfast in cream from Zweigart, and I've got a mess of parked threads, so bear with me for a second. Let me fix that. There we go. That's better. So, uh... Yeah, I got started on the May block. So this is a white flower, but there's a lot of greenery around it. So um, it's gonna be really pretty, I think. I think it's gonna turn out. I mean, if the other ones are in evidence of that, you know, hey. Uh, this is a freebie series by Alan Moore Stroh. Whenever I show this project, it is always linked in the description box. So if you're looking for it, check it out. Uh, that's where you can find all 12 of these blocks for free. Um, and they are gorgeous, are they not? So my plan is to work on this at least until I get the majority of it done. Um, I'm hoping that I can get the whole block done in a manner of three or four days. Um, but if I burn out on it, then I would like to get at least like 60% of it complete before I, um, before I give up and move on. So, um, no before and afters for this one, this go round. Um, I will do that in my next update. With that being what I'm working on, let's go ahead and switch over to plans. In plans, I don't have a whole lot for you. <laughs> um, so I'm continuing on with finish that stitch December until it gets to be too much. Um, I am currently in the mood to work on a sampler uh, or Hortus Venenum, uh, Poison Garden. Um, I'm in the mood for that. I'm in the mood for um, Have Faith from Cottage Garden Samplings. So we shall see if I stick with Finish That Stitch December through the end of the year. Uh, next week is going to be bananas. Um, there's a lot going on. Multiple Christmas parties and uh, just get-togethers with family and such. So we will see... Um, we'll, we'll see what stitching looks like next week. I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping to stitch at least a little bit every day um, because that's always the goal, but we will see what actually gets worked on. Talk about the most useless plan section ever. We will see. Anyway, um, some more concrete plans. I have a couple of things to, to talk about. Uh, so um, let's talk about WIPCO first. Um, so I mentioned last week about WIPCO and the fact that we opened it up to a group. I'm going to be totally honest with y'all. I don't know if it's like failure syndrome or something, but I really thought that there was going to be maybe two people in that group, myself being one of them. And we are at like 140 something, which is mind boggling and so, so cool. There have been a lot of questions about WIPCO. Um, what if I don't have enough whips? Um, I don't want to finish 24 things, but maybe I want to reach certain goals. Can I play? Um, can I participate if I include knitting, crochet, diamond painting, um, 
needlepoint. I've even had some people who are wanting to include books that they want to read and movies they want to watch. Y'all, <laughs> there's no prizes, so you can do whatever you like with WhipGo. Um, the intention is for focus on cross stitch because that's really what we're here for. But if you can't fill a 25 space WhipGo board with cross stitch projects, even if you like divide things up like by pages or blocks or what have you, uh, just make it work however if you want to play along. Um, as far as entrance into the group, I am basically looking at if we have any groups in common. I'm in a million and one very slightly exaggerating their Facebook groups for cross stitch. Um, and so if we've got any in common, typically you're approved. Um, if not, then we need to have a discussion privately uh, to figure things out. Um, but anyway, so I bring all of that up, first of all, to, to let everybody know that even if you want to include other hobbies in your WIPCO board, you can definitely come play along. Go for it. Um, just, I would ask that we try to keep it cross-stitch focused, even if there's fringe stuff. Okay. Um, another thing about WIPCO is that tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to go live on the Facebook group to run through it, um, just talk about how it operates and um, what things worked for me this year and what things maybe I am editing for this year, for 2020. What worked in 2019, <laughs> we're at the weird, weird sort of juxtaposition between the two years. What worked in 2019, what I'm changing in 2020, as well as to answer your questions. So head on over to the Facebook group if you are interested in WIPGO. Um, you can post your questions. I have a thread going for if you have questions. Um, and if you can't make that because people work or they don't live in the same time zone or you know life and it's busy and it's the holidays, um, I'm going to post that video in the group so that you guys can can watch it at your convenience um, to get your questions answered. So just thought that I would put that out there, make the PSA. Um, if you are interested in WIPCO but you've got questions, head over to the group. We're going to try to get those answered. Uh, doo -doo -doo. What else? Okay, upcoming videos. I have a couple uh, before the end of the year. I need to do like a sit down kind of discussion about my plans for 2020 and how I'm tackling my rotation in 2020. Um, I also have admittedly because Sammy J makes me do it. Um, I have gone back to the happy planner and I have a new happy planner that I would like to sort of walk you guys through with the, with the onset of all of these challenges that really were introduced here in 2019, I've got to find a way to get things organized and I'm a paper and pen kind of girl. So I have gone back to the happy planner and I'm organizing it there. So I'd like to show you guys that, um, if you are happy planner people. Um, so a plans slash planner video. Um, and then I am also going to do a preview video of my works in progress for 2020. Um, so a lot like 2019, I have a shortened list, a truncated list of whips that I am working on. And I would like to go through and do a mini whip parade showing you where I'm starting from with those projects. Um, a lot of them are going to be very similar to what, you're, what you've seen this year, but there are some switch ups. So just to, sort of to have a jumping off point, a zero, um, I think would be pretty cool. If I can post that on, see, the Virginia Tech bowl game is on New Year's Eve. Uh, we are playing Mississippi State. So if I have any Mississippi State fan friends, uh, sorry about your luck. Um, <laughs> so I would like to post that New Year's Eve, but it may not be till New Year's Day or the day after. We will see. We'll see what happens. Um, so in that video, I'm going to do a, um, like I did mid-year, I did a mid-year recap to show you guys where I got on my 36. 
ended up becoming 34, I think, by the end of it all. Um, but where I got through the mid-year point, I would like to repeat that slideshow style again, showing you the progression from the start of the year to the end of the year. Um, so that will be sort of a combined thing. Um, and then I've got my next update video, which will come after the first of the year. Um, probably not until the second week um, of the new year. One thing I did want to discuss with you guys. I am going to be spending upwards of two weeks, maybe even more, on In This Moment each month. And while I am happy to come and sit here and show you guys the same project, roughly... I don't know, 26 times, I think that might get a little boring and it would be the world's shortest videos. Okay guys, I've done another page, you know, kind of a thing. It's kind of boring. So um, I am thinking that I'm going to do Stitch With Me's during those two weeks. And then in the second two weeks of each month, I will do regular updates. Um, let me know your thoughts. I know that some people do not care at all for Stitch With Me videos, and that's totally cool. Um, but if you are good for it, if you are go for it, then let me know. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying not to, to bore you guys and also clog your feeds with a five-minute video showing the same thing over and over again. That seems kind of redundant and silly. Anyway, so that is that. I guess the planning section was even longer than the whip section, which is typical. All right, we're going to do extraneous topics, and I'm lumping them all together. We're going to do stash, knitting, and books all in one. Get ready for it. In stash, I have really just one thing to show you. I did receive my gentle art sampler threads um, from Nest Egg, um, from 3 All Threads. And those have already been worked into my stash, so I don't remember which ones they were specifically. Um, I did get my Color and Cotton uh, Fabric of the Month, and so I just wanted to go ahead and show that to you. It's a neutral, so it's not going to look like a whole lot of much of anything. It would appear that in my haste to sign up for Color and Cotton's Fabric of the Month when I came off the waitlist, uh, that I accidentally clicked 32 Count Belfast when I meant for 40 count Newcastle. My error. So this arrived and I thought maybe the belly band, maybe I got the wrong one. See there, it says Belfast 32. So I thought, not a problem. Let me measure it. It's coming up as a 34, 35 count. Okay, die process from a 32 down to a 34. That makes sense. Okay, well maybe, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe I got sent the wrong one. Um, I think I did 32 count on my Halloween mystery box, and so who knows, maybe. No. Mm -mm. Not Angela's fault. <laughs> Not anybody at Color and Cotton's fault. My fault. My bad. Um, and so I messaged Angela, and I was just like, is there any chance that we can switch my future subscriptions to 40 count? And um, that I, I made a big boo-boo, and, you know... If not, then that's cool, uh, but, you know, what do we do? And she did She did agree to switch me back to the 40 count for my future installments, which is good. Um, so I have some 32 count here. This is called Shiplap, and I'll take off the belly band and open it up. It's a beautiful neutral. I mean, it's it's gorgeous. It's kind of more, I don't know, it kind of has like a pinky tone to it, uh, which you're not really getting on camera. Anyway, it's beautiful and I will definitely use it. Uh, that there is no question there. Um, her fabrics are gorgeous and I love a good neutral. So. Okay, next let's talk books and this is gonna be really quick. Um, I haven't finished anything, but I am reading, which is truly remarkable. Uh, and so I am reading, finally, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I am listening to this on audiobook. It's narrated by Jim Dale. Um, but I do like to track my progress in the physical copy. So I'm about chapter four, reading it very slowly. Um, I need to pick up the pace. 
if I have any hopes of finishing this monstrosity before the end of the year. This is the only book in the entire seven book series that I have not read since release day or since I received it after release day. I think I, it took me a few days to read this one. Um, this is the only one that I, I haven't gone back and reread since. So that's really interesting. I am um, just experiencing some things that I don't remember from reading it the first time. And so that's been fun. I really like that. Um, speaking of books, in 2020, I'm going to attempt the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. I'm going to try to read all 50. Um, and to help me in that, I have, you see the jar here? Uh, that is all of the prompts. And then I printed them out, cut them up, stuck them in there. And each month I'm going to draw three of them. Um, so... That would get me to 36, so I'm going to have to maybe increase that to 4, because math. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll, I'll draw a fourth one. I'm not going to do it on camera. I've done it on camera in the past, and then I have failed miserably uh, in keeping up with, with TBR challenges like that. Um, so I will draw that off camera and... I'll talk about the books as and when I read them moving forward. I'm really excited about the books that I've already got chosen for January because I did draw three already. Uh, I'm just anxious to know what I'm going to be reading in January. Um, so I, I'm really excited to, to get into those. The hope is that I'm going to be able to read some things that I really want to read. I kind of feel like Magical Stitches this year got me to read more than I have in recent years, but it's been more to fulfill a prompt than to read something that's on my shelves that I really want to read. And in looking at the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge for this year, for 2020, I think that I'm going to be able to touch the things on my shelves that I really want to get to. Um, so uh, there's even a prompt, read something you meant to read in 2019, which is great, great for me. Um, so let me know if you guys are doing Pop Sugar. Um, it's a really diverse collection and I'm excited about it. Okay. Last but not least, a really fast knitting update. Um, I wasn't gonna show this to you guys because I haven't done, I haven't knit on this since last Thursday evening. Um, so the progress is kind of lame, but um, it's also kind of cool because the construction is just so weird on this. So this is my Kitty Invisibility Cloak. The design is by Casapinka. I'm trying not to stretch my stitches too much. Um, and so here we are. You guys saw the big triangle last week. So there's the big triangle. Um, and through picking up stitches along the border, I am adding in the new yarn. So the new yarn is Malabrigo Sock in Ochre. And so I've got my first three kitty foots. This is a really easy to memorize pattern. It took me a while to get the uh, to get it going, um, to really understand how this worked. But now that I do, it's gonna knit up real fast because it's just a really easy lace pattern. Um, so very, very cool, very fun. I am excited to, to see this grow. But like I said, I haven't knit since last Thursday. Um, I think I got a little obsessed with my Hade page and so this had to take a back seat. But I will get back to it maybe today uh, and make some progress. So I thought I'd show you that. Um, I probably won't show this again until I make some significant progress. If I only knit two rows, I'm not gonna bring it back next next time. That's silliness. So there's that. And then um, knitting plans for 2020. I mean, um, I don't really have any. I am leaving that very open-ended. I have in the past struggled with trying to schedule out all of my interests and then falling flat on my face with it. And so I'm going to leave knitting very open-ended. Um, reading is pretty open-ended. It's just, it's just that. Um, I don't think that I'm going to be participating in the reading challenge with Magical Stitches next year, uh, just because I want to read what I want to read, you know, uh, that kind of a thing. So 
Anyway, that is, I think, everything. A really quick turnaround, but maybe a little longer than even I was expecting, which is good. Um, I can ramble, as you know. Uh, so, without, without rambling for much longer about rambling, I am going to bid you all adieu. I'm going to get to editing. I hope that everybody's doing well. I hope that you are enjoying this holiday season. I hope that you have a Merry Christmas or a Happy Whatever. Um, and I mean that sincerely. I hope that you enjoy this, this season and whatever you choose to celebrate. Um, and stay well, stay happy. As always, be kind. I will see you in the next one.